Okay, here this section is 8.5 partial fractions. So the directions are, if the fraction is improper, then go ahead and divide it. What does that mean improper? When the numerator's degree is higher than the denominator's degree. Um, once you've done that, go ahead and, or if you didn't need to do that, then step two is factor the denominator. And then if you have linear factors, um, depending on what power they have, that might be how many times you're gonna have to use that denominator. So if this was a power of three, I had a linear factor with the power of three, I would have to have three fractions to represent that one, that one denominator. The same thing goes for quadratic factors. Whatever that power is, um, you're gonna need to have that many fractions to represent that denominator. Now notice, when they're linear, all you have is a constant in the numerator. When they're quadratic at the bottom, you have a linear in the numerator. Now this say A1, A2, AN, B1, B2, C, I don't use those letters, I just use A, B, C, D, E, F um, once I start setting this up. So the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and factor this. So we have to make sure that we factor this correctly because if you don't factor it correctly, the rest of your entire problem is wrong. Okay, so make sure that you factor this correctly. I do want sign, two opposite signs, so they're gonna have to subtract to give me five, which means one and six will subtract to give me five. And if I have opposite signs, I should still be able to end up with a negative five, like that. The biggest mistake with this problem is people will put negative three and negative two, but those don't multiply to give you a negative six. So be careful when you're factoring because if your factoring's wrong, the whole rest of the problem is wrong. Now what I wanna do is I wanna do my uh, partial fraction decomposition. This is gonna be part of my side work, okay? So I've got one over x plus one and x minus six, and I wanna turn that into, this has got a power of one and this has got a power of one, which means I only need one constant over this denominator plus one constant over this denominator and that's enough. So if I solve this equation by multiplying both sides or every fraction by the common denominator, the common denominator in this case is x plus one and x minus six. So when I do that, I get one equal to a times x minus six, because the x plus ones will cancel, leaving me with the x minus six, which gives me ax minus six a. And then same thing here, the x minus six um, terms will factor, the factors will cancel and I'll end up with b times x plus one, which will give me bx plus b. Now, here what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up a system of um, equations. So we're gonna take the um, coefficients of x and equal it to the coefficient of x over here. Since there is no x, the coefficient is zero. We're gonna do the same thing for the constants, the terms that do not have a variable, and the constant over here is one. So these are the two equations that we have. Now what we can do is we can solve them whichever way we want, substitution, elimination. I particularly favor elimination method so I will multiply this fraction by a negative. So I end up with positive 6a, negative b, and negative one. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add these two functions together to get a new equation. So this will give me 7a, the b's will cancel, and I'll get negative one. And if I divide both sides by a, I get negative one over seven. Once I have one variable's value, I can substitute that into either one of the original equations in the system. I'm going to choose to plug it into this top equation. So what I get is negative one seventh plus b equals zero. Well, that would mean that b would have to be positive one seventh if I'm gonna get zero. So what do I end up with? I end up with my fraction becoming negative one seventh over x plus one plus one seventh over x minus six. 
this fraction became these two fractions, which is what I have here with the correct values I found for A and B, okay? Then from here, you can separate, you can, however it is that you um, integrate, I can integrate this rather fast just because of experience, but if you have to see all the steps, then show all of the steps. Um, but I know from that what the answer is going to be. You do have the derivative over the original and the derivative over the original, which means you're going to have negative one sevenths ln of x plus 1 plus 1 7 ln of x minus 6. This is an indefinite integral, so you do have your plus c attached to it. So this is your final answer. Now I will do another video for the next example, so we'll stop here.